Hey, it's Norm. Hey, and it's Adam. And we are in your office. We've recorded podcasts here yes. before, so people have kind of caught a glimpse of what you have in your office. Now, we've been to M5, mm -hmm. we've been to the cave, and yeah. you have things there. But what do you take home? Well, I keep... Uh, it's a revolving museum here at home. I change up what's here in my office. The office is not packed with stuff like a cacophonous hole. I like cacophonous holes, but they don't really have a place here in the house. So it's curated. So it's curated and it's much quieter in here. I do store some of the things that I don't want away from me. Some of my most precious things. I, honestly, my Blade Runner pistol lives here mm -hmm. at the house. Um, I don't leave it in the shop because I want it close and it is one of the really irreplaceable, honestly, I could make it again, but you know, this is five years of work. Yeah. I wouldn't want it to go away. But you know, some things here are things you've made and some are things here are things you've collected or yep. bought. And this... This, this shelf, shelf. Uh, so this is a local cabinet maker made this shelf. I added the lights. Again, these are the same lights I'm using to uh, light the cabinets at the cave. Uh, I have just a little dimmer here so I can adjust the brightness. Um, and to me, they make these they make these shelves really sing uh, and be real specimen shelves for me. So I've got a lot of my favorite things on it. Um, I don't know if we've talked about this, the bride we sword. Have not. So this is um, a friend of mine made this while well, I hired him to make this. It's an exact replica in pretty much every single way there could be of the sword from Kill Bill. Of and how would you identify those attributes? Well, so uh, the, the, this guy, uh, Andrew Blakey, what he did was he looked at the fittings and the findings, the end caps. These all have names in Japanese, which I don't know right now. And he identified that they were probably bought by a prop master, like not super custom made for the mm -hmm. film. And it turns out he was right. So he managed to find all the suppliers of the original original uh, little doodles and baubles and handles and things. Uh, and then he also uh, bought a CNC machine to make the perfect lioness uh -huh. carving and the, the Hanzo carving, as well as the food dog. Um, when you see the blade being drawn in the film, you actually see a very specific hamon on it. That's the uh, edge. Now, this blade is not steel. It's actually aluminum uh, magnesium alloy. It's made for the practice of Iado, which is uh, of drawing a samurai sword. Lighter. Yes. Well, actually, it weighs pretty similar to a good sword, but um, this is, in fact, the same blade made by the same company that made Uma Thurman's sword for the film. So, in uh -huh. every way, this matches a shooting master. Wow. As close as you can get. As and close and as you've you done can get. some work on uh, it yourself. Uh, so, yeah, when he brought it to me, uh, he had CNC'd this ring here uh, towards the end. This is accurate to the film. Um, but I had dinged it up over time and didn't really, I was, uh, wasn't happy with how it was weathering. So, I remade it out of brass a couple of mornings ago. Uh, I just got up real early and went to the shop and machined this, and it's a little involved, more involved than <laughs> what I'm describing, but yeah, I made it. Um, I have, ooh, that, right. So I've discovered you can buy some great memes uh, 3D printed from yes, Shapeway, so I got Sad Keanu Reeves, I got Success, Success Kid, Kid, and I have the uh, fine gentleman uh. here. Um, and this is also printed on Shapeways? This is printed on Shapeways. This is a model of one of Theo Janssen's Strandbeasts yes. that walk along the beaches of Holland. And, Oh. If you if you uh, if you hold it up here, watch this. Gorgeous piece of machinery. It's so beautiful. And then there's this one, which I actually bought. It's a Japanese uh, 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 magazine in which every magazine comes a kit. And there's a new one that's just about to come out. I've got it on order. So if you blow on that one, oh, oh, there it goes. Ah, oh. gotta blow it a certain way. Now, uh, oh, also uh, in the movie Hellboy, when Ilsa gives birth to the beast Samael, she does it with a reliquary full of salt. This is, in fact, the one from the film. Um, How did you get that? I bought it on eBay. It just popped up. Like 350 bucks, like nobody knew what it was or wasn't paying attention. And it's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to derail us <laughs> for a second to talk about the story. I eventually got a hold of the art director. And this is before I met Guillermo. I got a hold of the art director for Hellboy, and he said, oh, yeah, you got one of those. Cool. So do you want to know the story about how I had it built? Yes, I said. So he's in Prague. They're shooting Hellboy, and Guillermo says, I need this, I need this reliquary thing. And he's, Guillermo has a sort of a history in his head about it. So the art director takes that, and he's trying to figure out what this thing should look like. So he goes to the Jewish Museum in Prague, which is a very famous museum, lots of amazing artifacts, and he starts talking to the conservators about what a reliquary from, of this kind of a history would look like. And not only do they give him a really good idea about it, but they're like, you know, we could make that. 
They can make I mean, one we, for them. We do bronze casting and stuff like that all the time. So these conservators at the Jewish Museum in Prague hand-built two of these for the film, and I managed to get one. It's one of my favorite, favorite objects. I've got a bunch of Hellboy stuff in here. Now, moving down, we've got things like Visible Dog, which I really like. Um, this is a jar of all my kids' teeth. I save, <laughs> well, okay. I save them. <laughs> I know that's kind of gross. Yeah, but yeah I don't mind being a little gruesome. Too fairy. Um, another Rasputin. Yeah, another Rasputin glove. This is one of the reliquaries that Abe Sapien wears mm. around his neck in Hellboy. Um, these are the beautiful uh, uh, gothic, like thorny D and D dice uh, that you yeah. can buy on Shapeways. Um, a registration pip from motion capture suits oh, from okay. Industrial Light and Magic. <laughs> a little more of an it's, esoteric it's, joke there. Um, some of my favorite weapons, like um, Obi-Wan's saber from Episode 1. Mm. It's one of the few things that's good about Episode 1. This Is, is it an actual, actual prop? No, 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 okay. no, no. Yeah, I, I, I can't afford that. That's $100,000. <laughs> this, this was just from Master Replicas. But it's beautiful. It's got a great weight to it. It's oh, yeah, a, it does. It's a gorgeous piece. Um, this is a demilled and deactivated exact replica of Indiana Jones' first pistol from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's mm -hmm. Smith & Wesson. Um, it's demilling is really complete. A pipe has been welded into yep, the chamber so you can't put bullets in it. And the barrel's been blocked uh, and the firing pin's been removed. I mean, in every way, this thing can't fire. But um, when I bought it, it was slightly, the barrel was a long barrel. So I actually chopped it and machined this gun sight hmm. to match the original. Uh, so I kind of like that I've got these two Harrison Ford classics yes. sitting next to and each other. And then a Will Smith classic. I've got a little Will Smith classic, yes. The um, <laughs> Noisy Cricket. The Noisy Cricket. Um, oh, okay. Um, Curta computers. These are actual computers. These are calculators that you operate by turning a crank. They're called the pepper grinders. Um, that's a series one and that's a series two. These are two of my favorite objects in the world. They're really complex, but you can calculate out to 11 places with this. It's, it's fancy or, abacus. Yeah. And what is this? Okay, this is actually really... A, now, I might be wrong about the history of this, but this is what I've been told. Um, this was a gift from a grateful client to my grandfather. My grandfather was Cushman Hagenson. Uh, he's one of the pioneers of breast cancer surgery. Hmm. Uh, he uh, was a key member of the Columbia Presbyterian Cancer Wing for four or five decades. Uh, you wrote one of the early seminal textbooks on breast cancer called Diseases of the Breast, and he received all sorts of really weird and wonderful artifacts from clients throughout the course of his really long medical career, and this is one of them. This is a Japanese medical doll. It is carved in ivory, and if you were a woman in 19th century Japan and you had to visit the doctor, propriety, this is what I've been told, again, I could be to this could be a okay. total lie, but Propriety would dictate that you would never be so untoward as to actually describe anything about your body to a doctor. Sure. Even that was... So this model allows a woman to point to pretty much any part of her body. But, but they carved it. Without having to describe... Yeah, they it doesn't look it like any type of medical doll. No, but, and, but it's seen. basically a reference. It's a reference that allows the patient to point to any part of themselves that hurts or has a problem with. Left knee only, never yeah. the right knee. Isn't that, <laughs> all it isn't that amazing? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I got after my grandfather passed away, and I'm, uh, it's one of my favorite objects. Um, moving on over here, we've got, well, okay, this is another beautiful object. This comes from uh, the house I grew up in, in Sleepy Hollow, New York, was built with a billiard room in its basement. This is one of the original balls from the billiard room. Oh. This is elephant ivory. They don't make them like that anymore. They don't make them like yeah. that anymore, thank God. Uh, in fact, actually, this is a very interesting story. This is uh, cellulose. There's a very fantastic story about this, about self-conservation. So round about 1900, Brunswick Ball Colander Company was making bazillions of dollars selling mm -hmm. pool tables and billiard balls because pool was undergoing a huge resur resurgence, much like it did with the color of money in the mid-'80s. Um, and the Brunswick Company looked and said, we're going to run out of elephants. They, they, would, they were killing thousands, tens of thousands a year, and they realized this wasn't sustainable. Of course you can find a replacement. So they held a contest to con co construct a replacement material for ivory billiard balls, and the winner was cellulose, ce cellulose, which ended up becoming the very first industrial plastic. It's the reason film was printed on it, because, the, because it was the first industrial billiards. plastic. Yeah, And we have the billiard industry's self-conservation efforts to thank for that. That's a history.
Wonderful. Yeah. This is a replica I made of a Russian nuclear launch key, uh, Jack Sparrow's key to mm -hmm. Davy Jones' locker, a lost key from Shapeways. Uh, some oh, this is a great piece. This this is a bit of MythBusters history right here. This is um, that's a forty-five caliber slug embedded in bullet resistant. LexGuard. Did you shoot that gun? I shot this. <laughs> okay. I shot this bullet, um, and it's just it's. I love that you can see the shock rings, the amount of force going on. So what this is, LexGuard is um, two sheets of uh, polycarbonate sandwiched on top of eighth inch polycarbonate sandwiched on top of two sheets of acrylic. Now the polycarbonate is known for deforming but not shattering, mm -hmm. and the acrylic definitely shatters. And in that way, uh, this LexGuard, which is like what you'd see in a bank teller's window, captures a projectile. Uh, Most projectiles. Right. It's called bullet resistant. When we fired a thirty out six at this, it went through like two layers of it. Um, again, stuff that I would. Uh, this is from uh, Joe versus the volcano. I've been planning to make a mold of that. Um, down here we have a couple of beautiful pieces. When you, uh, when you graduate from the Green Berets, one of the ways in which they, they let you know is they give you a knife called a Yarborough, and it's designed by my friend Bill Harsey. This is not a Yarborough. This is a civilian version of mm. said. Um, they are functionally identical except for a, a... Functionally identical for a knife. Yeah, they'll stab. <laughs> um, the only difference is that when you're a Green Beret, when you graduate from the Special Forces, you get a serial number, and that's assigned to, asso associated to you. Um, Bill recently did a series of knives that he hand ground in his shop and that were uh, released yeah. and I bought that. It's again, it's uh, this was made by Spartan Harzi. It's just a beautiful blade. You feel how light it is. The handle is actually made of a material that gives you a better grip the wetter it gets. Like it's actually Smart. really specifically made for use in the field under the most adverse conditions. Um, and Bill uh, is an inveterate blade maker so he's been teaching himself napping which is the way that Caveman ancient did it. man yeah. used to make arrowheads. And this is a, a blade he napped out of a piece of plate glass. Huh. Unbelievable. Is it sharp? Uh, it's fairly sharp, go ahead. <laughs> wow. And then some oddities. Uh, these are oddities I picked up on Etsy. Um, little figures made out of uh, Fema and Sculpey and painted uh, floating in jars. Um, yeah, I, I, I bought like 10 of these and sent a few of them to Guillermo. This is um, this is pretty cool. These are my uh, these are my headpieces yes. of the Staff of Ra. Now, there's two of them though. In the movie, careful watchers of the movie will notice that there's one that uh, Marion. My dog's barking. Uh -huh. um, there's one that you can see throughout most of the movie, but it's different than the one that Marion's holding in the very beginning of the Ravenwood bar scene. So uh, this is a sculpt from the replica prop form. Uh, I consider now I have the definitive edition of one of each of those uh, brass knuckles from Constantine, uh, a replica, a replica, not genuine. This is a, this is an impurity from an oak tree called an oak gall, um, and in fact, it is the source of uh, early ink and still some of the best ink. Oak gall uh, apparently is one of the key ingredients for making a really good hardy ink. Uh, before I did MythBusters. I did prop building for the yep. movies, but I also did some prop research for Master Replicas, yeah. and I did the early research heading up to the ranch to help them design a product of the thermal detonator from uh, Return of the Jedi. So, so you made the prototypes. Yes. And, and this is the final product. And that's the final product. Um, I actually, when I was making this, I called up the, the guy who had hired me, and I said, hey, Tom, it's Adam Savage. Listen, I got all the pictures of the thermal detonator. I should be able to turn you out a prototype in a couple of weeks. And uh, two days later, I got a call from the FBI. And I was like, hello, and they're like, is this Adam Savage? I said, yeah. This is Aiden Hawkins from the FBI. I don't know if Hawkins was his name. I mean, I just, whatever his name was. This is Agent so-and-so from the FBI. And I was like, you're kidding me, right? Like, no, sir, I'm not kidding you. Uh, Mr. Savage, are you building a thermal detonator? And I was like, <laughs> okay, who is this? He was like, I assure you this is the FBI. I, he said, let me tell you what I think is happening. I'm a bomb tech over here at the FBI office in Oakland, and I've never heard of a thermal detonator. But when I Googled it, I found that it is an item from the movie Return of the Jedi. Then when I Googled your name, I found that you had worked on episode one. I'm going to make a wild guess that you are replicating a prop called a thermal detonator from Return of the Jedi. Is that correct? And I said, <laughs> I'm laughing hysterically at this one. It's totally and two correct. Put together. And he said, uh, I said, how did you know that I was doing this? He goes, well, you called somebody last week and you left a message on the wrong person's machine. And whoever you did call, called us because they were freaking out about uh. hearing someone <laughs> building a thermal detonator.
Um, this is a, a beautiful replica of um, uh, Keanu Reeves' lighter from Constantine as well. Mm. Constantine is actually a better movie than it has any right to be. I really enjoy that movie, and some of the props in it are fantastic. So that's that's your shelf here. Yeah, it's a it's a moving curated kind of gallery. You know, it, for me, it's just like I I turn it on, I sit here, I take calls and do sketches and do writing of stuff that we're working on, and it's 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 like the small version of my head. Gives you things, gives you inspiration. You swap things in and out. Everything from Lego, things you've bought, things you've built. Exactly. That's wonderful, and that's just one wall of your office. Yeah. We're going to save the other walls for later. We will. We will. There's some other, other goodies exciting. to go over. Awesome. Thank you, Adam, for sharing this with us. Absolutely. Cool. We'll see you guys next time on Tested.com. Bye, guys.